Good morning. I'd like to call to order the Finance Committee, Tommy Utilities District Finance Committee. Uh, welcome everybody here. And uh, Lisa, would you like to read the uh, order of business? First yes. Order of business. Um, item number one review of the fiscal year 2023 capital improvement plan CIP. Okay. Anybody have a burning desire? Did you want to introduce anything? Say anything? Oh, well, um, other than you know, we spent we spent quite a bit of time. I was starting prior to January um, to begin to work on the CIP and held it up. But, uh, all of the department heads, superintendents, and managers all worked together on this closely. Eric and Johnson, Eric Hall, and Steve Shepley, primarily on so. I've seen it several times through through the different iterations of it. Um, I'm comfortable with the way it is now, and I'm, I guess we're here to just have, have to answer questions that might come up. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, I certainly have um, several questions. Um, we've, we've listed this again as uh, two separate items, uh, separate, separate from the board. Is that the way the budget is approved? Um, <clears throat> I've had a hard time recalling in my yeah. you know memory how we did it last year, uh, whether it was one item for both O&M and CIP or a separate? Well, there are two, I think, Steve can probably answer this better, but there's two separate documents. Um, but one, the, the, the O&M budget encompasses the, the budget for the CIP. And, you know, historically, specifically last year, what was done is there was one agenda item on the regular board meeting that included O&M and CIP. Then there are two separate resolutions that that is how the board adopts the <laughs> resolution for CIP and the resolution for O&M. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, part, part of what, you know, I want to put forward is, you know, I feel that the CIP and O&M uh, budget should be adopted separately. Uh, O&M budget being general housekeeping, their bills that we're going to pay every month, uh, labor, PG&E, gas, uh, everything that keeps the district moving forward, uh, <clears throat> repair items, and all that. Uh, CIP ties back into uh, our strategic plan. <clears throat> and I do feel that this board um, at some point in time, shortly on the horizon, will visit wanting to redraft or uh, redo the strategic plan. And <clears throat> the CIP is a direct reflection of that. Um, you know, where I'm having issue with the CIP budget is, is there are multiple items in here um, that, that just say improvements? Um, that they're not specifically spelled out, so there's, there's not a lot of transparency without going through each individual item that says improvement. Um, you know, specifically, you know, what are you doing has a, a improvement? Um, Jamestown distribution system. That, that's just you know what I picked up as far as the first item, you know, coming down uh, page three of five um, on here. But it do, it doesn't say are we rebuilding a water line? Um, uh, is it an extension? Is it uh, primarily to do with the laterals uh, issue down there? So there, there's not a lot of clarity that way. I you know also feel that the board should have. Um, more of an ability to discuss individual items so that there is a transparency and inclusiveness uh, with the board um, and, and not every item. I'm not looking towards, you know, a specific tool replacement, equipment replacement. Um, it's just certainly not getting into, you know, the specifications of the horsepower of a dump truck, you know, um, engine size that way. It's, you know, the dump truck is wore out. It needs to be replaced in a timely fashion. Otherwise, we're going to, you know, be spending more than what the value of the dump truck is to keep it on the road. Um, and, and 
along those guidelines. Um, is there anybody that's got questions for me as far as? I think I have maybe have some comments and I don't know if the question will come up or not. But so you, what you're looking at on these tables is beginning is just titles. You got to come up with a title, right? It's a title. Um, you can't put the whole, you know, Jamestown system improvements, including 500 feet on this street, 2,000 feet on this street, you know, eight inch diameter PVC pipe here. It's too much for a title, right? Also, in, in, in uh, I know in the past, you have, as a, as a, as a superintendent here, have seen the, the full complete document where you can reference the title to an actual one or two page uh, project description that gives you all the detail in there, right? So if you were to, uh, the Jamestown system improvements has been in the, in the budget for a couple of years now, and it changes as everything here at TDD, you know, the, the project scope changes based on the, the information you have today. So, and, you know, as far as, you know, transparency goes, that, that documentation is on our website, right? So anybody in the public could go to the Jamestown system improvements, find that one or two page job description and find out what that document is all about. So, so each line item, <clears throat> line item on our CIP is then in, inclusive to an expanded version on the on the website. Yeah, all, all and, uh, and that, that certainly you know puts burden back on me because I, ah, I, I need to take it a little bit further to ex examine some of these uh, items and stuff. But uh, but it, that is you know like I said primarily how the board. Envisioning the CIP would guide the district in accordance to the CIP plan. Um, <clears throat> it, it just, you know, like I said, it uh, without the power to go, you know, are we, you know, what is the improvements? There are titles on this page that I've seen multiple times, both back when I was an employee of the district as well as um, <clears throat> a couple of these items, and they may just be carryover, but we're carrying the same title, um, <clears throat> which kind of, you know, how, how, how long before we're done with the Im improvements on this yeah. particular lift station, this distribution system? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think the way I, I want to respond is, uh, so sometimes a project, uh, never gets even, never gets started, right? Uh, something will come up, delay the project, so the project doesn't get started, and so it gets moved to the, to the next year or, or whatever future date. Some of those projects, uh, like the Techite uh, Techite line replacement, right? That's a multiple phase project, so the title's not going to change. Phase one, phase two, phase three, and now maybe phase four. So sometimes the phase phase deal, and then other times, uh, like list stations. Uh, they oftentimes, the construction season and fiscal season, they don't necessarily match. So you get them started in one fiscal season, fiscal year, you won't get it completed until the next fiscal year. So you're just carrying when we rebudget what we think the balance is going to be. Okay. Um, and certainly, is there, you know, um, that leads us to is it, is there some way to delineate a, you know, multi year project? or a carry, <clears throat> carryover project where it was looked at, budgeted, um, maybe initiated through engineering, um, parts are ordered, but construction's not you know, going to, and to you know, clarify that that money was budgeted you know, previous year, not spent, that's following over uh, to do that, just so there's you know, more clarity in the, Projects list. Yeah, I can try to take that. So we don't really have carryover projects. Steve will tell you that because, but and you know that. But what we do um, could do to for clarity and transparency is add another column to this schedule that says fiscal year twenty two, and it will show you. You know, Steve produces on a monthly basis our capital uh, status report. And it could show you either what the board adopted last year, and then you can clearly see that this particular project was budgeted in this year. And um, we could denote if activity occurred in this current year. And then you can see that next year there's an additional amount budgeted, which 
should reflect to complete it or or could it could be a multi-year some of these are multi-year so um you can tell when um it's a multi-year on this what you don't know as you're asking is did we do something last year on this as well and is this just an extension of the current fiscal year so we could do that um, but it it doesn't lend itself very well to the um, cip plan that we publish uh, but it would be a good kind of document to have um, for you guys when you're evaluating the proposed CIP before you adopt it. I think too that I think um, since 2015 we have mm -hmm. a, a living breathing document doesn't breathe a living document rolling document the five years yet you like. I think if you go back to 2015 and you look at every every edition since you'll see sort of a, a trend uh, this this pattern or tracking, being able to track, you know, we started something in 2015, it finally got completed in 2017, or it hasn't got even started since today. So I think it's important to just understand that there's a, there's a lot of backup documentation with all of the real detailed information that we have in there, um, just as more information to, to absorb. Now, um, <clears throat> With um, and I'll have to go through and research the, the website. Um, but is there a component as to how these items are beneficial to the district? You know, what are the you know benefits of doing this particular project, such as labor savings, uh, financial savings in the long run? Um, you know, reducing manpower needs um, and that as well. I can keep talking. Um, yeah. So, you know, you said it also, Director Wright, is everything that we do, everything we do should tie back to our strategic plan. Right. I feel I can say with 100% confidence that everything we're doing today ties directly to our strategic plan, right? We have seven goals. Don't ask me to say them off the top of my head, but there's seven goals, and each one of these projects ought to tie to one of those seven goals, right? So, uh, thankfully, we have consolidated ten or twelve tanks in the last seven years, as obviously ties to our strategic plan to consolidate to be more efficient, cost savings to the customers, right? So that's one example of how we. Uh, <clears throat> decide what projects we're gonna do and how it does it tie to our strategic plan. And I'll, I'll uh, <clears throat> it's okay, I'll share screen real quick. And hopefully this is helpful um, to, to kind of show um, what this document looks like. Um, yeah, uh, for some reason I, how did I get off here? Okay, so, Bear with me a second. I totally messed up what I was trying to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is off of our website. This is the capital improvement plan. Um, and uh, I think many of your questions, Director Boatwright, are addressed when you scroll down to the end of the document where, in you can tell me if you are already aware of all of this, and I'm just repeating. If I'm just repeating something you already know, I don't want to waste your time. But um, this document is 80 pages long, and it, it goes through a general discussion of the district, the methodology it goes through to select projects. It has the tables, um, the phasing, uh, the cost estimates, and then in the very back, it has the project information sheets that are the detail that I believe you're looking for. And it talks about what the benefits are, what the reason for the project description and background and why. And then it usually has either photos or it has maps. It tells you when it starts and when it ends. If it's a multi-year project, then it tells, it tells you that. And, and then, um, in some cases, it may have even more detail there. The cost estimates, the detailed cost estimates where it says, hey, how many 
feet of pipe are not in this document. They just get so large. They are, though, every project at EL has developed a very detailed cost estimate, as detailed as we can in the level of scope. It's a project that we aren't planning on doing until year four or five. It's a bit of a placeholder, but if it's next year and it's in your budget for up for adoption, then we know we have to get pretty close. And so he'll have, you know, 5,250 feet of eight inch and we'll know if it's in pavement or if it's out of pavement. We'll know um, how many more or less some estimates of fire hydrants, ARVs. Um, we get into that level of detail for the cost estimating. And then we also assume if it's gonna be constructed by our crews, then we know our cost estimate is just a material cost estimate. Uh, we assume is it gonna be designed by a consultant and then, or by us. And we, so all of that is in those. And that isn't available for your viewing. We can give it to you, but it isn't available on the website just because, like I said, those are another 70 pages because we have probably 70 projects that Gabby created cost estimates on. But these are these project information sheets, and they are designed for the public to go and actually see what we're proposing. Okay, so the cursory high-level view of each project that is listed here in the CIP project has its project sheet on the website. Yes. The one that's currently proposed, we haven't generated all the sheets yet, so you can't go to our proposed draft fiscal year 23 CIP right now and see this sheet for every project. We were under the assumption that we would take this table to the board and once you gave it your blessing, then we would go into production mode, graphics mode, um, and and then all of these photos would be inserted, and this document um, would be uh, created um, for upload to the website. We're just not quite there yet. We're waiting for your approval. So I have a question. So historically, then um, the information that's posted on the website is approved budgets and approved CIP projects. Board approved. Yeah, technically it would be after approval. Right. Okay. And historically, that's the sequence of events. Right. You know, we're approved. This is staff has gone through, prioritized everything for the next year, updated the existing capital plan, and this is the proposed for this budget year. Then, based on feedback from the board, they'll update the five year plan and then bring that back to the board for adoption at a later date. And that's been consistent for multiple years now. Okay. So I'm hearing that correctly then, you know, we're approving, you know, CIP has a, you know, um, you know, the, the numbers look good. And then at a later date, we actually approve projects that are going into the CIP? What we're asking for here and proposing is for fiscal year 23 CIP budget. And here are the items specifically listed. If you'd like specific detail on an individual item, that's what we're here for today. This is just a committee meeting, but to the full board. Then with that feedback, we're continuing to work on the five-year plan. And the five-year plan will be finalized and updated and so we can post that as well. But what we're seeking next Tuesday is to approve the CIP and approve the OM. And just to clarify, David, they're separate. They've always been separate. Two resolutions, the board's approving them separate. And both of them tie right into the strategic plan. It's not like one's a strategic plan and one's not. They both are based on the strategic plan. Okay. Um, You know, I, I got to say, I kind of have a hard time, you know, and I realize that it, it's kind of a crunch, but I, I have a hard time approving a CIP budget that all of the projects aren't, you know, at least at a cursory level. If I pick up item 32 and say, you know, show me the details on it, and you weren't able to, you know, show me documentation on you know 
what the improvement is, you know, then what am I approving? Um, well, we can't. Yeah, we can't. Can show you that. Historically, right? boards haven't gotten to that level of detail. This, this is why this is new to us. This is why we haven't dropped, you know, all 70 cost estimates with the lineal footage of pipeline, with all the detail, because we didn't know that that was an interest. Um, but we have all that information. The, the numbers aren't random. We, we certainly went through great effort and iterations with the uh, operations staff to refine the scope. Gadiel did quite a bit of research on cost information. We have a great cost database. Um, he looked at inflation. He's looked at a whole host of things. So the numbers we feel are, are pretty good, but I totally respect your desire to see where are these improvements. Yeah. And, and there are maps um, in the CIP that usually show uh, our district and show where each project is located. So it gives you an idea of how they spread out over the service area. But um, we can provide those to you right now. Um, and we can, if you have a specific project, Gadiel is um, able to, to speak to a specific project. Well. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I certainly, in looking through the list of, you know, the items here, I have, you know, multiple questions on multiple um, <clears throat> projects, um, you know, mainly based on the fact that it says improvement. It doesn't, you know, define, you know, are we replacing the pumping works and we were replacing the plumbing and electrical, um, you know, so some reached its lifespan and, you know, being replaced, uh, you know, and, and that's where I get in to, you know, individual line items. Um, <clears throat> but I think the board should have the opportunity to look at this going, you know, I would like to see a more defined, definite, CIP, you know, what are we doing, you know, especially in this next fiscal year, what am I approving specifically? And I don't know, tightening the, you know, leash up a little bit on, you know, making sure that, you know, these projects that are listed here have a definite um, thing that's being approved, uh, whereas, you know, it's just Parrot's Ferry improvements, uh, you know, sewer pump station. Is that defined as replacing the sump and, or just left as a improvement? And, uh, you know, instead of the sump this year, let's replace the building. You know, I, I think I myself would like to know specifically what we're doing, you know, for the projects that are listed a little bit better than to leave it open-ended as uh, listed as an improvement. Jeff, do you feel the same way as a board member? Do you want to see nuts well, and yeah. bolts? And I mean, we could get out to pull up a sheet and show you the detail. I'm just... Personally, myself, um, not to that level of detail. I mean, I, I respect David's position because he's coming in from, you know, he worked for, he worked with you guys. He understands the the, uh, all the little nuances and, and uh, he knows exactly uh, which, which one was it? The uh, oh, sewer lift station you were talking about? Oh, per, per, it's per, Okay, per, per, per. I'm sure you've been there a hundred times or more <laughs> and you understand it from the ground up and that's awesome. Um, for myself, um, I, will, I will leave it to you guys, the boots on the ground to, uh, to tell me what, or tell the board for that matter, what needs to be done because um, in, in my opinion, that's that's your job. That's what you guys need to pull up there to tell us, and yeah, and we'll hold you account accountable, um, you know, going forward and doing so. Um, if there is something that catches my eye, and there might be, then then sure, I want to pull some detail up, and I'd be happy to to ask Adiel to do that or, or whoever else. Um, but I, I do know, I will say this that. A couple of years ago, I think it was uh, the first time we went through a budget when I was on this board. It was, we got off in the weeds on, on a few things and it, and it ate up a considerable amount of times. And if I remember correctly, um, it, we didn't really, it didn't really make that much difference in the end. So I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant to, um, to, uh, to get off in the weeds like this, because again, that's what we have the staff for. 
they come forward, they tell us what we need, they're the boots on the ground. We, I feel we, we need and have to trust them with that and uh, and go forward on their word. Um, that's just my feeling. Yeah. Well, you know, I actually agree with you. I, you know, because as, as a board member, not my job to go, hey, you know, that, that sump needs to be replaced or, you know, that control system for that, um, you know, distribution booster station needs to be updated uh, and approved. And that's not where I'm at. But when I'm approving a budget, I would like to be able to see that specifically listed out. Um, you know, basically eliminate the improvement, um, you know, for a specific area. Uh, if Parrots Ferry sewer pump station said sump replacement, you know, that says we're going to specifically do, and it's an improvement, you know, uh, sump replacement on that, but it's not. To me, I'm looking for the clarity on what these projects are. That's a good one. Can you verbalize when you say you want to see before you approve a, a project, you want to see it listed out? Can you verbalize to me what it is you want listed out? Uh, just something that you know makes it clear as to what is uh, being done. Take you know, say like a dump truck. I, you know, that, that's a pretty straightforward one where we're replacing a dump truck. That you know, it's going to have a bed that lives up and you know dump stuff back back in. Hauls material from point A to point B. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Here to so the job. Okay. So um, let's, if we can, can we pull up Paris? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm going to to share more technical thing. difficulties. No, I think so. Not. So the Paris Ferry lift station, if my memory serves me correctly, let me tell you, this last year has really done something with my memory. So it's <laughs> boy. Um, but if my memory is correct, the Parrot Spray List Station improvement has been on the five year plan for a while. It's been under construction now for about a year, waiting for some supply chain issues. So there's really good history on our website on the Parrot Spray List Station improvement project. I will let everybody know it's not a secret. That as time marches on, even in a year's time, the scope of a project can change, right? And that happens. It just happens. We try and we learn from that. We're trying to really control the scope of work, growth, and change, but those things happen. So I'll stop talking. So even the detail, I think. I, think so. I want to know if this is the level of detail that you're looking for or not. Just a real general question. With the Parrots Ferry at Loop Station, we're talking about here. This this is the one that's right there by the habitat project. Um, no, uh, uh, that, that's actually Damon. Oh, Damon. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you go right. a little bit further. It's next to Columbia Communications. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know where that one is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to be sure. And I mean, sure. there's a lot of lift stations on very very. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Listen, I didn't make these names up. <laughs> <They're driving laughs> no, that's fine. Thing. I just I just wanted in my own mind to be See, to know what we're talking about. There's the improvement. And, and this cost estimate reflects a few things that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know just looking at it. One, there's already been a lot of work on material procurement, and this is like the last bit of work on that project, which is, speaks to your question earlier. And then the second thing is it's being done by TUD forces. So the costs here are focused more on outside service and, and materials. Um, things that we would have to have an outlay, a cash outlay for. It doesn't really include any labor. Um, but you can see the level of detail here um, that Gadiel has put forth based on interaction with Rich, the wastewater superintendent, on what um, the improvements need to be and what problems we're solving. And then on the very bottom, if you, if you will, Gadiel, just scroll down. Um, you'll see that it was 77,000 um, and you'll see that there's no other costs, no surveying, no permitting, no environmental. And then there's a 20% contingency uh, on that. And then even from there, then there's based on what year this uh, expenditure is going to occur, Gadiel has inflation factors based on a 3%, we assume 3%. Um, and that's how we got to the 95,172 that you see for the board's approval. And so there's every project has this. Um, 
Some of them have more detail, some have less, especially when we get out four or five years, like Don said, the scope. We, we think we know what we need right now, but I'm sure it will change by year four. And that's why every year we update this. So as it becomes clearer and, and closer in focus of what it is, then Gadiel will tighten up each cost estimate every year. And um, in inflation, we may change that 3% inflation to something higher, who knows, next year. Uh, and so the board will be able to see these costs adjust each year as we go through. And we add another year on. So we're always looking at five five years. The cost of inflation actually back to the accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so many of our, <laughs> you know, so many of our projects that I see, I'm not involved. They go through and do this, but this is the crunching that's been going on for six, eight, twelve months. I mean, David, you've been involved, you know. So, I mean, I guess one thing you're proposing, we could list six different items. Said Parrots Ferry PGD service, Parrots Ferry demo. Parrots Ferry trucking, Parrots Ferry fence, Parrots Ferry clunkers. But I don't think that makes it more useful. I mean, if anybody asks, this is what's going to be available when it's here. And if you as a board member are comfortable uh, with what staff has done, we have these for each single line item. And Daddy will can bring it up. We could incorporate these into the CFP document that's published yeah. on the website for transparency. No. No, we could do that. And we just have them in the historically, we just have those project information sheets. But we could do that. It wouldn't be hard uh, as, an, as an exhibit or. It does add. You know, the book is already so pretty thick. thick. So they can thicker. Cert certainly, I, I understand that our CIP has you know more work than, you know, a, it's a very ambitious schedule. And certainly, there may not be time to complete every project. Um, there may not be budgeting, you know, finances available for every project. It, it just, I, I would like to see us as a board, um, you know, approving a CIP that is information is available, however deep a individual board member would like to dig into it. Um, And you know, see us complete those things that we've approved as a board. Um, and, and instead of you know, seeing Parrots Ferry come up, you know, five years in a row where we've changed from year one inflationary costs to year five, and then we're still carrying it, you know, further. Um, in my mind, you know, it's kind of you know, you've had this thing for five years on the budget. Are you we're going to do it? We're getting out of here, you know. I, I uh, I'm trying to be curious here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm very proud of the work we do here. Our crews, these managers, your superintendents are doing an outstanding job with what little they have to do with. I very proud of what they do and what they've accomplished. We can't stop supply chain issues. We can't stop inflation. We only have $2 million, if that, on the, on the sewer side to play with. And we have $50 million of work to do tomorrow. We're doing everything we can, Mr. Go, right? Everything. Our doors are always open. You can come in here, go through every file we have. You're welcome to do that. I would like for you to do that. Because I know how detailed you are. I know how detailed Director Ringan is. I know all the directors have a different level of detail that they're interested in. You're welcome to have every sentence of it. Just come in and ask or provide it. If you're, I, what I'm trying to understand is, do we have to have this level of detail for an audience, uh, the public, and on our website, or is the way we've been doing it and being very successful? There's no, I can't. I'm not feeling challenged really as to some project that uh, we have done or haven't done that, that goes against our strategic plan. So just let me know what level of detail you want, how you want it, I'll get it to you, I promise you. CIP performance, you know, we have 
Thank you, Don. I, and I want, I'm sensitive to yeah. kind of touch a nerve when we talk about safety performance. In the past, we've given the board kind of graphs. It's like, hey, this is how what we said we would do. These are how many projects we finished, percent budget, percent project completion. And I, I've really been reluctant to kind of say this to the board, um, but I think it, it, it's just honest, right? And that is, we aim as high as we can and we never quite hit the mark on CIP. And it's a combination of a lot of things that we already know. But one thing I want to highlight is that it's dependent on so many factors outside of our, our control. And that is consultants for one. We can ride consultants as hard as we possibly can to get permits, to get CEQA done. It, we're limited in our ability. And what I tell the engineering department is, it's like we have to be moving every project along simultaneously. And so you have to be riding consultants hard. You have to be getting right away. We, we can't force, you know, private property owners to give us an easement. We have to acquire them. A purchase and sale agreement might need to go to the board. Uh, we might need to have a special species uh, study done that can only be done in the springtime for wildflowers. We, we don't control so many things on these projects. And so I'm making excuses that are real for why we can't complete our CIP 100% every time. Um, but I assure you, like Don said, we work our tails off to constantly move these things forward. And that's why our budget reflects a really high bar because we don't know which projects are gonna actually get done. Sometimes we hit a jackpot and we get a great property owner and they're like, sure, we'll give you an easement tomorrow. We jump on it. Sometimes we're in negotiations like we are on Willow Springs to get the land for that lift station. And we may reach an end point on that after we've invested a year or more and realize, well, we gotta go complete redesign because we can't book the lift station where we bought. These are all things you guys know. I just want to point those out that we do uh, we do accomplish quite a bit given the numbers of factors that are totally outside of our control. And the engineering staff is constantly picking their head up, looking on the horizon, and pivoting to whatever the target is at the time. If we have a, a, a regulatory agency that's asking for something, we pretty much drop everything and give it to them because they're a critical path. They could sit on something for six months. If we have a property owner who's ready to give us an easement, we call Jack, you know, our, our surveyor essentially, and tell him to fast track that so we can get that. We will go out in the field with a notary and we'll get everything signed. It's uh, it, it's just the nature of the beast that we're never gonna probably be able to finish everything and then you factor in that there's construction season that falls smack dab in the middle of our, uh, you know, our budget, so. Anyway, long-winded explanation for CIP performance. You, and I, you know, I get that. So, you know, setting the bar way high, aim for the stars, and you know, hit orbit. Um, you know, kind of scenario. Um, what about items that the board approves? The funding's available this year. The groundwork is done, and maybe it's at the bottom end. Uh, but it was a project that was slated this year. Why would that project then end up going through to next year, not being completed and, you know, continuing on? I mean, it had a priority. You know, if I have a five-year plan, such as, you know, the CIP budget, and I don't get to those things that are just out of reach, you know, of doing that. And I understand that there's going to be, you know, priority emergency items, um, you know, tech, the tech guideline explodes again. Well, you're going to have to, you know, repair and, you know, change up a section of that. Um, <clears throat> that, that may not, may or may not have been slated in the CIP budget for, you know, that year. But why do items travel all the way through, you know, funded it? Okay, funded it again, funded it again. That item, you know, because it had it initiated, you know, whatever number of years prior, why would that not have been, you know, completed? To give you a it has a priority coming up in the next budget. I I would 
to answer your question and not repeat most of what uh, Eric had just said, if, if I'll explain something in a second, but if you have a specific example of one, I'd love to hear it. But let me give you one that was completely out of our control, the TWSOV, right? When did we start that? 2012? 12. Probably the most critical project or, or plan this district needed to do. Staff was ready to go with it. I was a, I was a water operator at the time. I mean, I was a superintendent, I guess. The board put it on board. The board pulled the funding for it. The board opted not to do that. It had to stay in our CIB. It was the board's decision to pull it. There's one example of why a project didn't get finished in time. And you don't think that didn't cost us 40, you know, $20 million? I think it did. There's a couple other concrete ones. Some recent ones. Uh, Valley Vista tank. I know it's not popular. It's been on here for two, three years now because the developer keeps saying, we're starting. And then they don't. And then we're starting. Another example, utility relocation. I don't know how long we have the Pedro Y uh, project on our books because the county waited two, three years to do that project. Raw High Bridge, we've since removed that. That was on our before, uh, I think it was the year before last. Uh, those are outside of our control. Another one is anything related to a cost share on a grant, and then all of a sudden it takes an extra six months, it takes an extra year to get the grant funding agreement next year. Uh, other ones are literally uh, right away acquisitions, a very, very common one. Uh, sometimes we pump the brakes on a project because we're like, oh, that's a good one for a grant. Rather than expend our money now, let's see, let's wait six months to see if we can land something uh, that will help the budget out. So there's just a lot of um, a lot of reasons why these get carried over and they don't seem to necessarily get completed. It isn't because there isn't work being done. There's a lot of work being done in the background um, that we can bring to the board's attention because they're so busy. Um, I don't feel like in a staff report uh, at a board meeting, it's really the, the place to, you know, ring the bell and tell you guys about everything that's going on. But we've got probably 25 consultants we're working with right now. And if you don't touch a consultant on a weekly basis, you don't really know if they're doing any work. Some consultants are really good. They'll give you a, they'll send you their invoice every two weeks or every month. So you can read rest assured on that. But um, if you don't touch base with them, and you don't make sure they have everything they need to and stay on their schedule, they're gonna go, they're gonna bill you for a little time, a little time, because it's in there, and most consultants is in their interest to just drag projects out, to be honest with you. Um, so those are those are kind of some reasons. There are many, many others, uh, but uh, we're working right now on the Mount Provo uh, project, the grant funding project. Well, we're going through a BLM link. We have to get a, a license through BLM. Well, in order to do that, there's federal environmental requirements. We usually do just state fire, federal environmental, or state environmental. So it's just, uh, and we have to even research who owns the land out there so we can get uh, an easement. These things just take a long, long time. I'm sure you know uh, what title research is like. Uh, so anyway, we're doing the best we can. There are a lot of projects on this list that by the time we get to year five, though, they may even drop off. And they won't carry over. I assure you that some of these will carry over beyond year five and will be out six, seven, eight years before we complete them. Let me add to the context or you know to the discussion here. From what I hear, data, there's two things that, that came up. You know, one is the board adopted the CIP, why didn't you get it done? Second one is talking about funding and money is being available and carrying over from year to year. Well, first of all. Our budget is just a point in time. It's the best minds you have hired here at TED coming up with as of today, this is what it is. Your years of service, you know darn well, something could happen today that changes all that. You know, look at the, the, the last drought. The opportunity came to connect those people in STEM. Wasn't on our CIP. We're gonna say, nope, not on our CIP. We gotta get this done. No, we got funding. We helped the community, we dropped what we were doing, we did it. Um, where in our CIP did we plan for COVID? We've had retirements, we've had different GMs, we've had different board members, stop, start, do this. 
So as of today, I mean, every day your staff is trying to figure out what's the, what's the priority. Is it that mainline break over there? Is that lift station that's on the CIP for the fifth year? So we're constantly reevaluating, reorganizing, trying to leverage available funds, existing staff, requirements, greatest good for the community, everything else. So what the board adopts right now, I would hate to think, well, the board says, do the Columbia lift station. And if our experts say, no, do the Parrots Ferry lift station first, the board's gonna say, hey, I told you to do Columbia. I just don't see that as being in the greatest good of the community or our ratepayers or our employees. The second one is funding. And you know, a lot of agencies believe in this carryover thing. You know, oh well, we didn't do this project, so I'm gonna carry it over. I work a little bit differently. We don't have enough money, period. We could do a, a CIP budget that consists of two items. Look, we got it done, or we could do it and do 200 million dollars. Well, that's never gonna happen. So we try and be realistic, and we've hit the mark for many years now made huge improvements to the system. But from a funding level, I have to come, we have to come up with that cash every year. And so I do it on a year to year basis. So what I stress to all of them when they start the CIP, you need to tell us what you're not gonna finish because I have to provide it in next year's budget. If there's another 75, 95,000 we need to finish Paris Ferry, it better be in there. Anything over 50,000, that is of a project nature has to be in the CIP. That's what our existing policy says. So I don't believe in carryovers. I don't believe in that. Will a project carry over? Of course it will. We all know that. Eric just talked about permitting issues, other issues. So from a funding basis, I need to have it as part of this and what we're asking you to do. I count on the experts here to decide what can we get done for the greatest efficiency, greatest quality, greatest you know, cost benefits within our structure. So again, just the perspective of what we go through in doing the budget and what we're doing in CIP. Now, when you go to a five year, every year we need to look at and say, some of them are gonna come out, they're done. Some of them will come out because, hey, we got bigger fish to fry, or some of them may be moved back. And so it's going to be a living document that should be looked at day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year on here. But all we can do is make sure we have sufficient funding for the next 12 months and be looking out there. For us to say five years from now and say, hey, five years ago, we agreed we were going to do the Mount Provo system or whatever, and we didn't do it. That's where it comes into prioritizing what's critical and I'll, I look at the, the prioritizations, you know, first one is like imminent failure. Okay, doesn't that outweigh cost, anything else in the whole bit? I mean, number one job, deliver the water safely. So again, I'm just speaking from my uh, perspective and my observation um, for whatever. Sorry. How do we determine which projects actually have actual dollars behind it funded? I'm not sure. That's um, what we're presenting here. You know, the CIP has, you know, $2 million, dollars, $7 million you know, this year. Uh, behind it. Um, the current CIP actually goes a couple million dollars beyond that, you know, as far as the reach of our current, you know, finances without expanding debt services. How do we define on the budget that we're approving, you know, which items are actually going to be done as far as uh, replacing the dump truck, uh, Parrots Ferry lift station improvements, uh, distribution system improvements, which items actually have real dollars, you know, put behind them? Well, I, I'm not really sure I'm following if it is as we gave to you at the last um, workshop, basically the budget includes what's in here, the $7 million. Yes, there is a deficit. We're short about 3 million. It is not designed to say the dump truck has a higher priority over the lift station. What we're asking the board to approve is a total of 7 million. Throughout the year, it'll be up to us if Eric can get that funding from the state fund for that particular improvement or project, bonus. 
we'll have additional funds. If that funding doesn't come through, but we think we could get the next year, we may delay it. You know very well with dump trucks and everything else, sometimes you order it and it takes 18 months to get it. But we're gonna include it here because we have a real need right now. These are the items here. So it's not the board approving each individual item. The board is approving the total CIP that includes all those items. Now, will all of them get done? Probably not. Will the majority of them get done? Absolutely. That's what's been proven. That's what's happened in the past. That's the way it's been done. Now, if you're proposing to go to an individual item by item for all five board members to approve which item you want and which item you don't, that's pretty big departure in how we've done things here. I think it's like you uh, explained a little bit ago. It's a, it's a point in time. And as time goes on, um, based on the criteria that Eric brought up, all those different items, land acquisitions, uh, grants availability, uh, and everything else, um, and need, and imminent failure, and all these things you brought up, that's what determines what actually gets done. Correct. And that's an important point, Jeff, that I want to make out here. In the, and it's typical for governmental agencies and what we're doing and why it's critical that it's the total budget you're approving. If we have a project that goes makes us go over the seven million, something comes up, we need another million. We are going to be required to come back to the board and ask for a budget amendment. If we have a project here that, hey, we didn't plan on Mount Provo, but we got the opportunity to do it and it's still within our 7 million, and we're gonna do it by delaying another project in that, we're gonna just, we're gonna do it. We're still gonna notify the board and do that, but we don't have to amend the budget to move between line items. Now, if this board, as you know, majority wants to basically approve line item changes, again, that's different than what we've done in the past. But just what you said, Jeff, if we have to, go between line items, but stay within our total budget, that's all right. If we have to change that, then it's gonna be different. Where, where, was your, where was your PSPS line item the first year PSPS is canceled? Yeah, you know, the thing with the PSPS is it really wasn't a capital project. It was more operational. It was sure. renting the generators. It was the overtime. It was that sort of thing. And so, again, I think his point is that delays you. Of course, and, and, that, and, that, and that effectively, the money that we had to spend on, on that to, to, to be able to function through those PSPS uh, periods effectively robbed money from other projects that we were supposed to be. Everything, everything, <clears throat> everything extra comes from the capital. Yeah, yeah. and um, uh, now I'm sure you have it accounted for, or at least have something accounted for PSPS. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but it's when these things come up like that. And uh, uh, to bring it back a little bit, David, um, it, it seemed like early, you know, in your first comments, you were, you were making the point that, that uh, like for uh, uh, Columbia Sky Number 2 sewer lift station improvements. Okay, and I, and I get what you're saying. Okay, what the improvements, that's a big word. It covers a lot of different things. Would there be a way to put a subheading underneath that, like uh, Columbia Sky uh, Number Two Sewer Lift Station Improvements, and then, like David said, is it is it building replacement or is it sump replacement? Just a little more detail. Is that something that you're? Well, yeah, and yeah, like I say, I, I have a general issue with the word improvement in the you know CIP because, it, like I said, it's an all-ending descriptor. Um, so do you think yeah. all the board would like that cost sheet we just looked at? I I, I, to me, that's, to, do six to, me to me, that's that's a little too much detail for the board level. Now, me as a board member, if if it's um, if it's a project that strikes my interest, and uh, and as we were talking, I went on the website and I pulled it up here, and I can see I can I've got all the detail personally that I need to look at on these items, um, and I'm going to do that, um, but. Um, but I understand David's point, though, when when it says when it just says improvements, it might it might be a good idea to have a little more detail and meet that to just to narrow it down a little bit. You know, give a give a little one more line of, of description that might uh, that might clarify it a little bit. I guess I, I struggle with the description here because like the one we just looked at, 
You couldn't just say paving because then somebody would say, you're paying 95000 for paving? Well, no, actually not. We're only paying thirty. Pull, pull that back up. And the fence is five, and this one's six, so maybe we can just include the sheets if, you, if that's the detail you want. I, mean, I think it's a description, though, right? What's that here? Just a, a, more, an addition to the title. Yeah, you know, an yeah, addition yeah, to yeah, the title. Yeah, a description of what improvement stands for. Okay, right. Steve, to answer your question. Personally, myself, David, mm -hmm. I don't need all that information right there. I think all of that right there, you got you got the PG E service, you got the demo deal building, you got the trucking fill. I guess that's what you're pulling, you're bringing in fill to fill in a compaction and all that kind of stuff. Okay, fence, concrete stuff. To me, right there, that's a site improvement. That's an so, improvement. Yeah. So right. yeah. So if, but, if 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 you had a if you had one more line underneath it that said site improvement, that would encompass that in my mind. I don't know if you if it, it satisfies your what you were uh, what you were going after, but uh, but if it's if it's replacing pumps, if it's piping, if it's if it's all the inner workings of the actual job that that site actually does, well now that's that would be that would be a um, uh, you know uh, redesign of uh, pumping uh, the, the, of the sump itself. I don't know if some other some other title yeah come some up other some other descriptor you know, and. and I, I would like to see a way to, you know, get to this level of detail, you know, by, you know, page documentation, you know, I see the tabs across the bottom, uh, looks like, you know, we're in Excel, you know, and I'm sure each tab actually has a different level of description or there are different projects, um, you know, going across the bottom. Um, See there, yes, yeah. more detail. Yeah, it's, 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 it looks like a tool project. Um, yeah, <clears throat> uh, we could do the following, which wouldn't be hard. I don't think it would be hard. You, tell me it. you can hyperlink it, uh, where you know you have your schedule, your capital schedule, and you have your title. I don't think we can really provide the level of detail you want in the title, but if it's hyperlinked, the user clicks on that project and it takes them directly to the to the spreadsheet, to the detailed cost estimate. Another way is you do project numbering. And so this is project number four, and then you go down to cost estimate number four. Or, um, you know, there's, there's just other ways. You can do it alphabetically, what, whatever works. Um, but uh, I, I think it wouldn't be hard for us to include all this detail in a document where any user could find what they need. Yeah, I, you know, just for myself, I mean, I, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a contractor. I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm not an operator. I'm not a sewer plant operator. Um, I don't need all that stuff. I don't. That's what, that's what you guys, that's your jobs. That's what we have to rely on you. If, if there's, if there's something going askew, well then, you know, the board, the only, the only power the board has is, is over Don. I mean, that's it. And we have, we have to hold Don accountable to hold, you or superintendents accountable to take care of this stuff for us. So um, we have to, uh, it, we can we can take a look at that detail if, if something spikes our interest. I'd be happy to, and I'm sure there's things, I know there's been things in the past I've looked at, and there'll be more things in the future. But um, for myself personally, as a board member, it's really not our job, I don't think, to be burrowing down into into this level of detail on every single thing. So yes. That's just me, Dick. Well, you know, and I certainly agree. I, you know, I think you could go through, there's at least one third of these items that are greater than 50,000 that are very straightforward. You know, they're, they're, unfortunately, it looks like a fleet, you know, uh, issue. We're trying to maintain our fleet and being able to do the everyday job out in the field is a huge draw on the you know capital improvement budget um, you know not everything listed here is happening um you know there are some that are on year four for uh, vehicle replacement and that's good to see it coming up on the horizon um, and that I'm sorry, a tangent just came to mind about electric vehicles. Just let that go. Um, <laughs> well, it gets updated every year. So. <laughs> uh,
What else do we need to do on this? Anything? Can we move on, or have we, have we, have we, have we beat CIP up good enough? Or? Exactly. Yeah. I think we beat, beat, beat up CIP because we've spent, you know, yeah. certainly an entire hour on this. Okay. Um, I, I was ready to budget. Do we want to touch anything in there? Is there something you want to yeah. take a look at, or are we? Or is right, it, right. I just want to make sure that yeah. I'm being responsive. I want to make sure I'm being responsive to you. I want you to be able to have the detail you want. If Director Hearns doesn't want that's okay too. But if you want something from us or me, you let me know and I'll, I'll hand deliver it if I have to. Right, so. Yeah, and you know, like I, I'm still sorting this out in my mind as far yeah. as what a board member does. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm trying not to jump into the weeds. But exactly. as a board member, you know, I I like to see black and white. You know, that's as far as you know, I'm a CIP, and you know, this is this is what we're doing this year. Um, you know, this part may be shooting for the stars. Um, it's unfortunate those those items have come up that are a you know must do that was an unseen item you know caused by some outside entity or you know uh, event um yeah that definitely takes away but uh, as far as you know once a item on the cip reaches you know year one this is what we're going to do you know if it has to be carried over into year two i don't i don't want to see it make it into year three you know once it's been you know approved by the board you know they said that you know, this was a priority, you know, it's there for a reason. Um, obviously, I, I feel that, you know, they, they shouldn't, you know, continue, you know, because inflation rates, they're, they're going to continue to bite into every project. Um, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> if you think in your career, and I know Don's told me, we talked about replacing this tank. 12 years ago, whatever. And there's good reason why it hadn't gotten done. And also, you know, we had the same board we did last year. And I'm a big fan from a financial standpoint. You talk a lot about transparency. I like consistency. And this presentation for CIP, this presentation for the O&M budget and everything else has been consistent for quite a few years now. And so if we're going to deviate to providing this level of detail for every single item and everything else, I just want to make sure the other four board members are comfortable with that as well, because I think there's a certain benefit in transparency for the customers and the community to see things on a consistent basis from year to year. And that's why we provide you a status report on CIP as far as why things haven't been completed, where they're going. But um, I, I, you know, my recommendation would be that we present the CIP and loan and budget consistent with how we have in the past. And if you would like any detail on this, you tell us right now, and we can write right this minute, today, tomorrow, whenever. Um, but I just, I'm not a fan of, of adding that level of detail to the board presentation, just for consistency. Is that level of detail available? I mean, we just said, I mean, you, you know, know, a couple clicks of You, you tell us what you want. Yeah, you just brought it up. You can have access to the same file. But what we provide to the community and everything else is this five-year plan. It'll be finalized with that. But for purposes of adopting the budget next Tuesday, um, I, I think at, as presented as it was done last year, we were a board member then as well. Um, I would like to be consistent with that. Unless the two of you recommend, and then we'll have to go to the full board and do that as well. So typically out of these committee meetings, there is some sort of a recommendation um, from you guys to us going forward. Or not. Or not. I mean, when you say we're not, I mean, there could be no recommendation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct, right? It could be, yeah, yeah. Have a recommendation, which means mm -hmm. <clears throat> pra practically means we just bring it to the full board. I would like to see it recommended to the board or a
more of a survey of the full board as to their their understanding of the CIP at the current detail or desire more detail. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and I don't think, you know, I don't think you're totally on my side and I'm not totally on your side. <laughs> well, that's, that's, um, you know, it's kind of thing. So uh, I understand that, but do the other ones feel comfortable and confident at the current level of detail or desire more detail in the CIP um, is so that's or, or you know is so could we could I um, make a suggestion then? Um, so what would your would your recommendation be that that the finance committee would like to see more detail on the CIP budget. That's um, that's kind of broad though, because what's what's more detail? What is that entail? Uh, yeah, we can present it next Tuesday and the board can vote. You accept it as it's presented, or you can say no, you don't accept it. You want to come back with more Steve, what they're mulling over is what detail to bring to the board. That's what they're mulling over right now. Do they want yeah, how, much detail? how much detail? I think that's that's the question. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah certain, certainly because you know, like I said, I'm not looking to get down into the brand name of PDC pipe that's you know going into the ground. That of course. Sorry, and, and Steve I mean, and the warehouse person looking for you know for parts and pieces. Um, that's kind of where I was going on the um, on the question I had regarding the. Uh, uh, the title, the titling of the items on the on the budget. I don't know. Is it would it be something as simple as that, or would it be something more detailed than that? Um, well, I'm, I'm th yeah. You can't just say you know Parrot's Ferry and you know put a item there that doesn't have you know at least some backup documentation as to what you know the project is going to do uh, do there. Maybe I have a suggestion. I don't know if we can pull this off. I don't want to write a check that you can't cash over there. But um, well, first of all, it's scheduled to be on next Tuesdays to adopt the budget. So we run the risk of not adopting the budget, which gets her closer and closer to the fiscal year ending. So, but we have room. There's a, a window in there. I know it doesn't make anybody happy here, but we could we could adopt it a little bit later and still do it in this fiscal year. But I think I'm correct in that we have that one page project description already. No, no. We have all the cost estimates, we know the scope, but that's a graphic design yeah, it's a lot formatting of exercise that uh, Cindy hasn't okay. undertaken yet. But it doesn't mean we don't have the detail. It's just we've got it documented. Okay, here's a fill book sheet we have marked up here. Things that Gadiel has collected in his interactions with operations staff in order to create the detailed cost estimate. That's really what our objective was, get to the cost. Mm -hmm. We'll come back and make something that's presentable for public consumption, which are those project information sheets. We don't need those project information sheets as much. I mean, yeah, it's nice to go back and refer to, but they're really for the document because on the website, so they're public to do what you're describing. You're just asking to do it before. Well, see, you know, that, that leads me back into that same issue I'm having where I'm approving something, but we haven't got the cost estimate for it yet. And I'm not asking for cost estimate, you know, detail, you know, provided to me, but if we have a project in here um, and it doesn't have, you know, that um, I think it was Barrett's Ferries, you know, sheet, you know, being able to be with it, yeah, I'm just approving a, a large number in the budget. And, and then we're backfilling, oh, the cost, here's a cost estimate that goes with it. I think the cost estimate provides you yeah. the detail that you need. 
You don't need a map. Exactly. You know where it's very close to. And that's what would be on that would be a picture of a building and maybe a map. You know what it looks like. You know where it's located. I don't feel the project information sheet is, is of great value to you uh, with your intimate knowledge of our system. The cost estimate certainly would be because it tells you exactly what we're doing. We're doing paving, we're doing you know, fill, we're getting a PGD service. Are, are the cost estimates done? They're all done. Okay, so yeah, that's what we've been saying. All those tabs they have to be done, right? They have to be done. That's how we generated all the numbers that are in this. And you know, because where you first started there was saying that you know it, it wasn't. No, no, no. The cost estimates are all those details are, are available. Okay. So yeah, we wouldn't be able to come to your board with these numbers without having done those, and that's why we started that in January. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's why I'm proposing what I do. You know, we, we need to post this board packet tomorrow unless we're agreeing that we need to extend it. Okay. And so, you know, what I'm hearing is, David, you, you want to approve each individual item. And uh -huh. so we so, can give you those sheets like we just showed here. The other four better members have never asked for this. We can provide it. And David, you can step up at the meeting and say, I think we should have more detail. The rest of them could say, Here's consistent with last year. Here's we're asking for a total of seven million dollars, okay. And if they're not comfortable with that, then that gives us till the next meeting on the twenty eighth, and to come back and include this additional detail. That that's where I see. Or we just don't take it off the agenda for tomorrow and put it on the twenty eighth and redo everything to include this individual detail for every single. I don't, yeah. I don't need to see that. <laughs> I mean, if, like I said before, if I see something that spikes my interest and I want to dig down, I'll do it. Um, but if, if you want to bring it before the board and, and hash it out, then we can do that. But, um, um, I, I don't. And, and I'll say that the scope can and will be modified over the course of, of the year. As long as we stay within our budget, like um, there, we've had numerous instances where you know we presume something very conservative. Uh, let me give you an example: rock excavation. Oh my goodness, it's going to be crazy about rock excavation, and then it doesn't transpire. So um, it may be that oh, the PG&E service that we have out there, we can repurpose. We don't need a new PG&E service. Um, that we've taken um, a conservative view of these costs, so that. We don't go over budget on them. Um, there's there's times when we've removed scope. Uh, we really don't need to do that at this time uh, when we do a condition assessment or something like that. A lot of times, too, the scope may grow, and that's what Steve says. Well, we we have to live within our overall budget, and that's why he does monthly CIP, um, you know, progress reports in terms of finances. You guys don't see those, but you do see your quarterly financials, and and you're seeing how much of the CIP budget's been spent. So you can kind of monitor progress that way. Um, we typically only do the CIP performance once a year. Um, but I, I guess what I'm getting at is, is the scope. Uh, if you want it after this is all approved and we have this $7 million, if you want to have a detailed conversation about specific project and what the scope is, um, you know, there's, there's always revisions that go. It's an iterative process for us. And if you have concerns, we could talk about those, but I think we really need to get a budget approved. We really need to get CIP approved. And um, I'm interested in what the will of the entire board is, uh, because you and I can have a conversation um, that is probably not going to be of great interest to the rest of the board, is my guess. Hey, I wouldn't want to hold that conversation after an approved budget. Well, and that's why I said that scopes change. There's flexibility built into uh, this CIP. We've identified the projects we want. We've given our best estimate 12 months out of what we think it will take to complete them. It is never exactly that way. I, I will submit to you that no project on this list will we complete to the dollar that the estimate was prepared. None. They all cost different. The scope will change on every single one. The key is, are we mostly living within? We'll stay within the, the $7 million. And if we need to go over that, we'll let you know. 
as far as which project comes first or when or how or if. But again, David, I keep hearing you say you, you want a discussion. Well, that's what we're here for. You know, stop in, see Eric, see Don, see me. What, you know, what can we provide you to assist you in your role as director that you don't feel you're getting right now versus having to do it in the public setting? We're saying, I'm not saying I'm not hiding anything or anything else. It's just, uh, I don't think, like Jeff said, he's not interested in digging down to that level of weeds uh, to do that. Whereas you have the expertise and skill and background experience to do that. But again, get involved, have us do this ahead of time, however, we want to do that. Now, the, the only other question I would have is um, the deficit spending. Uh, Steve, do you have a number for the current proposed CIP? If all items were complete, what that yeah. deficit would it's be? Part, it's part of what was presented at the last workshop, which we can pull up and look if we're going on to o &M. It's part of the recap on the o &M. And I believe it's approximately $3 million water and sewer combined which is consistent with what the board adopted last year. And we stayed within that number. Typically, I don't want to approve a deficit budget, but we do it because we're going to get some form of grants, supports, anything else. We're going to have some kind of delays, be it whatever, permitting, uh, materials, supplies, whatever. We're going to have unforeseen events, uh, that, like a mainline break or a flume or something that pulls us away. And so that's how the board and the GM was comfortable adopting a deficit budget. So what I presented to you last time and what I do this time right now, the total overall deficit, if we did every single one of these, if every single o and expense came out exactly as budgeted, we'd have a deficit of approximately $3 million, which again, we're either going to finance, we're going to get a grant, or we're going to delay something so that we don't deficit spend. Um, in, in the past, how much have we had to finance ourselves? Well, I, I'm proud to say, you know, when I got here, we were in a, a very, uh, a very, very uh, bad situation as far as cash flow, deficits, loans, and everything else. And the first thing I did is when your credit cards are maxed out, you don't go get new credit cards. So we have not incurred any additional financing. The only thing we financed in the last 10 years is Big Red out there. And we only did it for the water share on that. And that has now been paid off. Uh, we did enter into for the regional plant. We have a USDA loan that once the plan is completed, will be a 40 year loan. So if you go back, three, four, or five years, the board adopted almost a $3.6 million deficit. I said at that time, I'd be more comfortable with a $2 million deficit. The next year, I think it was two. The year after that went back to closer to three. But each of those years, we were not required to get outside financing. Now, did we intentionally not do a CIP project because we did not have the money? No. If I ever told Don as operations director, you don't have the money, no. Have you ever laid off anybody? No. So even, you know, we are proposing in this budget a deficit spending. It says that right in the resolution that that's consistent with what we've done the last few years. And I'm comfortable with that amount uh, that we will be um, as we have in the past. Um, <clears throat> question, as we, you know, finance it, deficit, how long does it take us to pay that off? Well, again, we're not financing the deficit because we didn't end up spending it. You know, if you take the total OLM budget, the total CIP, between those two, we did not deficit spend last year. So while the budget was to deficit spend $3 million or whatever it was, we didn't do that for a wide variety of reasons. Um, the biggest change financially has been the five-year rate study that was adopted in 2015, and that really righted the ship, and there were monies being repaid from water to sewer, which was accomplished through that, and five consecutive rate increases has got us to where we are now, and so we're able to do that. 
But you know, CIP, like I said earlier, it's a fine line between saying, well, I'm just giving you the things I absolutely know we're going to get done, or including everything that really needs to be done. And so we're trying to find that happy medium where we can go year to year. And we're watching it every week, every month, you know, quarterly finances to the board and stuff. And we're going to continue to do that, you know, with this change in pg &E. I mean, our focus is going to move away from that a little bit more on these items. So, so just to be clear, because I think it's important that anybody listening or, or any of the public, and for us too, um, even though we've had these these deficit budgets the last two or three years, more than that, yeah, more than that, um, it's it's very important that anybody who's interested understand that even though the budget was a deficit budget, at the end of that fiscal year, we did not go into the hole and finance any spending because we didn't we didn't spend that deficit. Thank you, Jeff. Critically important. Yeah. You know, while ideally we wouldn't deficit budget, it'd be much worse to actually deficit. Yeah, that, that, and, yeah. and David, um, I don't know, I don't know if, if you're in the same mindset I was the, the first budget go around I went through here. That that was a hard hump for me to get over when 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 we were when we were presented with a deficit budget. I did not like that. I was very uncomfortable, and um, and I'm still uncomfortable. But what Steve is saying is exactly right, and, and what the others are saying too is that is that we we show this deficit budget in the beginning with with great knowledge that at the end of the day it's really not going to be a deficit deficit budget when we get down to uh, June thirtieth. So. Um, it's a it's kind of a kind of a strange way to run it, but but that's those are the facts. You know, yeah, those are the facts. It's, I'm a realist, Jeff. And so, you know, a lot of districts they'll plan on getting capital grants before they get them. And I can show you historically we get and capital I appreciate grants. that. I appreciate but, that because because when you start when you start on your edge and, oh. and, and, and depending on funds that are undetermined and that, that may not come through, which is exactly what you're saying, that's when you get into trouble. Yeah, unless I have a signed contract and agreement, we're going to live within our means to do this. And you know, I was uncomfortable with that. See, absolutely, I did. I mean, I propose that so we always have a balanced budget and stuff, but we've had different boards, different GMs, different things. So, despite our best efforts to complete the CIP, you're welcome that we don't complete the CIP. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this is the world we live in. It's like if we completed the CIP entirely, we'd be running a serious deficit. If we just budgeted for a few projects that we were sure we could complete, we wouldn't open up our field of view or our vision to all the needs that we need to be working on simultaneously. We can't, we don't have the luxury to just pick a handful of projects and just knock those out. We have to be making consistent across the entire district, across all the service areas, um, you know, progress so that we will be able to complete them, but it's going to be. You know, it may take two years, may take three years, but we're going to get there. Otherwise, if we just focus on one or two projects, things are going to fall down. And then we're going to be forced to shift our efforts over to those. And, and we don't have that luxury. It's not the best way to run the organization. I think. Uh, that, <clears throat> certainly agree with that. Preventative is definitely more of a, you know, than the repair or reaction, uh, you know, budgeting. It's not a place you want to be. <clears throat> so, what have we decided today? I've certainly had a lot of like, questions and generalities, um, you know, issued. But, you know, like I said, I you know, think we should um, at least have the board an item for the full board as to are they comfortable with the detail. Okay, uh, I'll agree with that. We can see our main agenda then. We can yeah, discuss it. Not that. necessarily defining where that goes. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's something you, 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 know, you they, believe in strongly, and and yeah. um, and okay. Um, you know, the operating budget um, is done by separate resolution, um, and if it's listed as a, you know, if there's more detail on CIP needed, I don't see the. Yeah. Push that back just a little bit if the board wants more detail on it. Or 
Uh, and so I, so, I, so I take that. I think I understand the, the, the recommendation is, is there is no recommendation. And at the next board meeting, you're going to bring up your concerns to the board, right? And then we'll see where it, that goes as far as the CIP goes. Is that the recommendation or lack of? Well, it has to be agendized so that, you know, the board can, the board, you know, have a, at least have a discussion on it. The CIP. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's going to be two separate uh, items on the, because we've got a lot of agendas on the item. Unfortunately, there's a lot going on, but one will be the CIP followed by the ONM budget. Okay. Approval. Right. Of each of those. Considered for approval? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Not, a, not a, to deny it. Well, <laughs> David, would say, David would say discussion. Well, yeah. Yes. Okay. That's a prerogative. That's the board. That's, right. Yeah. So you're, there's going to be an item, O and M. I mean, capital project item for discussion and potential to approve. Based on your discussion, you could opt to delay the adoption of that CIP to the twenty acre. Yeah. And if you do that, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you would be by default delaying approval of the operating budget. You you wouldn't approve an operating budget and not approve it. the operating budget is the all encompassing. It's the implementation of your CIP. Yeah. Yes. Uh, why would they need two separate resolutions? Well, I mean, I, I don't know that they have to have two separate. I think historically that's how we've done uh, it. It's, it's always done that way because, again, the O and M budget does not include this detail that you're doing here. So the resolution is going to say, "Here's your detailed CIP. Here's what the board is officially approving." In the O and M is just the total seven million that makes reference to nothing else. And so that's how you get there. So if there's any changes made to the CIP, those are going to need to be incorporated into the OMIN. And again, that's consistent with what we've done better part over the decade. When you say OMIN, you mean operating budget? Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, sorry. That's all right. I have one last thing I kind of want to add to this, to this contribution to be short. Um, one advantage, a major advantage actually, in, in a few years ago, we adopted budget in May, right? That gives us the option to start ordering parts. You know, the lead time on sumps and things are now six, eight months out. Mm -hmm. So if we can get a month jump start, if you've adopted the budget, we can start ordering uh, and receiving materials only don't receive it pay for it before July 1. So just FYI. And you know time is money. Yeah, um, I wouldn't have a problem with it. They, you know, obviously everything then triggers sooner to prepare and all that. It just, I feel the board needs to be comfortable of a level of detail. Of yeah. Well, by way of, uh, by way of six or seven years in a row, at least a 5-0 uh, uh, vote on these items, I feel like the board is comfortable, has been comfortable. Otherwise, we wouldn't have 5 votes votes on such items. But I, I know you really well, and I know the detail that you're interested in. I'm happy to provide it for you. I just don't yeah. think the rest of the top down um, is. It, it's not, well, it is detailed because, you know, like I said, you know, as a project's listed, you know, and some of these items just have got that word okay. improvement and then got a number next to it, but it doesn't have an explanation of what improvement uh, is. Like, like Jeff said, you, you have the authority over me to make sure that uh, this district is running in the direction you have it going in. I wouldn't be granted to you if it wasn't doing that. And if, it, if something comes up, then you can hold me accountable. One throat to choke, is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> and two hands to do it. Yeah. <laughs> or ten, or ten, ten. Ten. Yeah. 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 When, when I made that comment, what I meant was that uh, Public can come down and get their hands around our throats. <laughs> and then we can turn around and get our hands like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can turn around and get your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a group back row. They outnumber me. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this didn't work out in my favor. <laughs> that is a result. The results are stacked too high. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything else, David? Nope. Okay. Uh, I am sufficient that we've battered this one around. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, uh, you guys all good? Anything else you need to bring up? Any other comments? Well, we didn't officially. So that's the end of that item one. 
<laughs> and, and item two is you good with item two, or do you want to have any discussion about item two? I think we we danced we danced a little bit with item two. Yeah. Uh, I'm good with item two. Okay, I am too. Very good. Okay, then we'll adjourn the finance committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. A soft touch on that. <laughs>